the year of uh, 2020 was a very challenging one, for, globally, for all of us. Naturally, because of the pandemic that uh, has been challenging us all over the world. But still, uh, the ecosystem of innovation is in Israel be, uh, continue to thrive. We have an activity of a, around 9,500 startups in different stages. We have managed in 2020 to increase in, with, in 31% the investment capitals in, in startups in Israel, raising about $10 billion. We've raised in 20% the amount of deals that was strike, stroke with the Israeli startups, again, in different stages. Maturity level companies have managed to raise $6.55 billion, three times more than 2019. That is in capital markets. We are considered as, or we have been rated as number one in raising venture capital per capita, around 450, 415 US dollars. The second in line is the US with 282. Bloomberg decided to rate Israel within the top 10 countries in their innovation index, where I think we're rated seventh. There is a great presence of multinationals in Israel, all of them opening research, small research centers in different fields and innovation centers and innovation hubs. Uh, companies like uh, Google, Microsoft, Cisco, Pfizer just recently, Kodak, Nvidia, Huawei, uh, Xiaomi, and the list is quite long. We also had in the last two, few years, few successful exits. Mobileye, which has this automatic uh, vehicles that was bought, purchased by Intel. And Intel also bought another application called Move It and Waze by Google. And again, I could go on and go on with the list. I'm saying all this because this still happened under a very challenging year of 2020. And one of the first questions that I'm usually asked is what is it that one might say behind the success story of Israel? Why and how it became what is known as a startup nation? What, if at all, could be learned or applied in other places from the Israeli story? And there are probably many reasons that one can give. I think I would want to focus on few that I think some of them are very relevant to what I got to know from this beautiful country, Kenya. I think the first and foremost reason why the startup nation of Israel has been developed is because it has been developing as part of a very crucial and immediate need. When the modern Israel was established in 1948, unfortunately we were still surrounded, all the countries surrounding us were our enemies. They made a lot of efforts to make sure that we will not stay around. God, thank God we, they, they were not successful, successful in that endeavor. But the crucial and immediate challenges that we had to face both on the physical security of the people of Israel, defending and establishing the modern, uh, the modern country again, and on food security, because Israel, mind you, is two-thirds of the land of Israel is an arid area. We do not have the luxury of many other countries when it comes to uh, water. So those two existential challenges were, were the ones who forced us to make sure that we are innovative, because without uh, without thinking, creating, being able to find solutions for immediate challenges, we would have been in a different position, totally different position. So thank God we managed to develop one of the strongest, if not the strongest, uh, defense forces in, in our region. And thank God we also managed to find creative solutions, even though without having almost uh, water, to develop a good food sector, agriculture sector. So this was one reason, crucial and immediate necessities, and existential uh, uh, necessities. Another component was commercializing most, uh, many of the innovations to the civilian sector. So many of the uh, innovations that were relevant for the military, for the defense, were then adapted to civilian life. Government support was another important uh, component. An approach that I think is uh, very well known in Israel of a must win, must succeed, do not take anything for granted, challenge everything that is being told to you, what we, know, what we call in Israel chutzpah, always, being, always challenging the situation, I think was another yet very important component. So this culture of always 
trying to find solutions for practical issues and doing it in a manner that you always challenge and you always, you never take anything for granted, I think it was another very important component. But when I'm asked what is the one very crucial and important factor that brought us maybe to be a successful startup nation, I think uh, and I believe it is the fact that we do not uh, fear failure. We do not hesitate to fail when we make our first endeavors, our two first attempts, and we, are trying to, and we are trying to find creative solutions. On the contrary, we understand that from failures you can learn. And sometimes it's even best to first fail before you actually uh, uh, materialize and get, re reach any mature solution for a, a challenge that you want to create. So for me, the number one reason and for being a startup nation, for being successful, is not only the atmosphere and the culture that we've been growing through and within, but it's also, as I said, not to fear from failure. I see more and more merit and more and more reason seeing us developing also cooperation in innovation. And I think this is something that is very important for us, and I think we are seeing it uh, being developed between our two, two countries. And Kenya is an excellent partner for Israel for that. It's an excellent par partner for Israel for that because you are your, here we can find the hotbed of talent, thriving innovation ecosystem. We see many hubs being grown here. One example is, of course, IBIS uh, in Strathmore, and then the iHub, and C4, C4D, and uh, Nylab. I hope I mentioned most, the most important ones, and I'm sure there are more. But the fact that there are growing hubs here, I think, is very important, and that is definitely a field for cooperation with Israeli hubs. We have promising partners, like Konza, Konza Technopolis. What best to try and fight partners in the first smart cities that is being built here in Kenya, what is known as the Silicon Savannah. And I think there is no better way to uh, take our partnership in innovation but to get startupists from Israel and startupists from Kenya together, trying to find solutions for very practical challenges. And as I said, the Konza City, the first smart city in, in, here in Kenya does provide many challenges that we want to and could address together. But most important, you cannot do all this without having youth like yourselves, which I'm very proud of. Youth that are interested in taking part of the innovation ecosystem of Kenya. Uh, uh, youth like yourselves who have chosen to be doers, that have become solution seekers. And I think this is very, very crucial. So I'm very much looking forward. Mr. Tanoi, I'm very much looking forward for our Shark Tank that we're doing together to see these youngsters performing and giving some solutions and some ideas of solutions that might be adapted at the end of the day in this smart city and hopefully they could do it together with Israelis so we would have youth from both Israel and Kenya cooperating on very practical issues in innovation. So this is for me very, very exciting and I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm very, very proud of all of you and as I say, I can't see, I can't wait but to see your amazing promises and uh, solutions.